Okay, so GMK Tech have sent me a new mini PC to test, and there's a cool feature about this one. I like the Perspex lid on the top showing the fan, but the thing I was most intrigued about was this one takes an external graphics card. This has got an Oculink socket on it. I've never tried one of these before. It's already got an AMD Ryzen Pro 7 processor, so it's going to be pretty powerful anyway, but the ability to add a graphics card is really appealing. It comes with a pretty chunky power supply, so this is 19 volt, 6.3 amps, so 120 watts. Quite common for a mini PC to come with a monitor mount, which I really like, and also comes with a full-size HDMI. So I plugged a USB-C cable into this monitor, so the mini PC is powering this monitor, and you can see touch is enabled even on the very start of it. We've also got a USB display port on the back, so we can do dual monitors with just USB-C, both monitors are being powered by the mini PC. We've also got a display port and an HDMI socket. So it does support a total of four monitors, including the full size display port. Uh, and also if you're using an external GPU, that would add extra displays as well. I'll make do with three at the moment. So this one is powered by HDMI and these two are USB-C. I've had no trouble connecting to my Wi-Fi, and that's probably because we've got a plastic lid and also a plastic base. This bit's aluminium but uh, the Wi-Fi signal will easily be able to pass through that. So while it's downloading all the updates, let's have a look at their site and see what we've got. So we've got 16 gig of RAM and 512 SSD, and this is the Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H. So as I've already discovered, four screen display, Radeon 680M graphics, Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed, We've got two PCI3 M.2 slots inside, DDR5 RAM up to 96 gigabytes, dual cooling fan, so top and bottom, and Wi-Fi 6. So 3.2 to 4.7 gigahertz, eight cores, 16 threads. And there's a nice little breakdown of the cooling system. It does seem pretty quiet at the moment. It's doing updates, but obviously we'll see what happens when we start gaming. So here's our slots, so the DDR5 RAM, and the two M.2 slots. Dual 2.5 gig high-speed ethernet. So on the back, we've got two USB 2 sockets. The HDMI is 2.1, so 8K60. The display port is 2.0, so 4K60. I've already discovered that the USB-C is display port compatible, but it's also USB 4.0. And then the bit I'm most excited about, the Oculink connector, although I haven't got anything to plug into it yet. Another display port connector, again, USB 4 on the front. A couple of USB 3.2s. I like to see good connectivity on the front and to have two USB A's and the USB C is really nice as well as the headphone jack and that nice green power button. So you can see it talks about the Oculink port here with a nice big graphics card next to it and it does warn you that you must switch off to unplug or plug in the graphics card. So I was so intrigued with the Oculink that I've actually just ordered an adapter to allow me to use an external graphics card with it. I haven't ordered the graphics card yet. I'm going to get the adapter first and then sort of think about which graphics card to get. But probably an NVIDIA 20 series or 30 series graphics card and see how well that works. I already have a power supply in an old PC upstairs which should be suitable. So I'll just need the graphics card and then I'm up and running. But for now, let's try the onboard graphics. The Radeon 680M, which this uses, I've been super impressed with already. So let's try EAFC 24 first of all from Steam. So this is at 1920 by 1080 and let's just jump into just a normal game. And you can see all the menus and everything are fine. All the music sounds fine. And the intro looks pretty decent. So 60 FPS, and um, we'll just keep an eye on that temperature as well and see how much it ramps up. The fan isn't running very fast at all at the moment. You can see not struggling at all. Lovely and smooth. I've definitely found with other games with lengthy gameplay, it has slowed down a bit, but I found with this, it didn't seem to. The fans did come on faster a few times but it does seem to stay pretty cool so really happy to have that running so well it does seem to keep it well at 60 degrees it doesn't seem to go above that uh, certainly in this game I definitely heard the fans working harder when I was doing PlayStation 3 emulation which I'll show in a minute but for this it's not struggling at all 
Yeah, that'll be the end of the half. So this is Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and you can see if I look around with the mouse, it's lovely and responsive, 60 FPS, running at 1080, and not struggling at all, or it looks like I've got to go this way. I just haven't played it for ages, so I don't really know the controls. But it is really enjoyable. Where am I going? Down here. And across here. Yeah, it just looks great. It just looks really smooth. Oh, am I supposed to go down? And it's, it's really good gameplay, but because I haven't played it for ages, I think I played it on the Xbox before. I've just kind of forgotten it. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, well you can see it's working anyway. So I've also got The Witcher 3 on here. Let's try that out. So this is running at 900. And looks really nice. I turned off the motion blur because it was awful. Um, but uh, running like this at 60 FPS most of the time, it's not struggling with it. So we go back and have a look down here. Can you get out of that bit at this stage? <laughs> no, you can't. But yeah, it looks great and doesn't seem to struggle when the action is happening. So if I move near this fight, you can see it's not seeming to struggle at all. And around here and all the main characters and everything. Yeah, really impressive. I know it's an older game, but the graphics had a bit of a revamp, and uh, apparently since then it became a lot harder to run, but it does cope really well on this little mini PC. This is a game I saw on TikTok, so this is a 4x4 car game, remote control car game, but it's actually pretty cool. So you can see here, around about 30, 40 FPS, if I move it around really fast. And... Uh, it's just a really relaxing game to play. Uh, I could do with changing the sensitivity a little bit because it wants to really accelerate fast, but it, yeah, it's really, it's really good. And I downloaded this a while ago, so I don't know if there's a newer version of this available yet, but it is just really cool and just really relaxing just to get, try and get over certain obstacles and things and just sort of get through. The water looks really cool as well, so if I go down here slowly. I just reverse a bit so I'm not going like a rocket. There we go. And you can see all of these stones and everything just look really cool. And especially when you get in the water and in the pipe. Uh, and if you can use this on full settings, which you're going to need a dedicated graphics card for. Um, but it's, it's surprisingly good looking. See all these bricks and all the reflection and everything. And you can go through this little tube. So I definitely recommend trying it. Although the only... It was a link in the TikTok video, and it was a Google Drive link. Um, but uh, it does seem to be all right, but I haven't really checked it thoroughly. So, you know, do this at your own risk. And there is a channel on TikTok about this particular game. So, you know, maybe ask some questions on there if you're interested in it. And you can see this does ramp the GPU up a bit. So 74 degrees it's running at the moment. But again, the fan isn't running at its high speed. It seems to be PS3 that gets it running at its highest speed. So let's just quit out of this because I've also installed Retrobat on here, which is a multi-game emulator system. But all I've installed is Xbox 360 and PS3 games just to give it a try. And Forza Horizon does quit out, but it does seem to be that it just doesn't like this game. And I did read a few things about people having crashes on it. It's when you go into an event rather than when you're just driving around. But let's just drive around a bit just to show you how well it's working. So my desktop is still at 1920 by 1080. And if we just sort of spin around here and show it dropped a bit then, what to about 26 FPS. But it, it feels absolutely fine to play. It feels nice and smooth and responsive just like playing on the Xbox 360 back in the day really. As you can see the sliding and everything is working really nicely. And all the audio and all the music I've had to turn off the soundtrack. But uh, yeah, all of that is, is definitely really good. 
and it lets you do all the menus and the maps and everything like that. But as soon as you go into an event, it seems to quit out. I'll go back and see if I can get it to work, but yeah, as I say, I've tried it many times and it just quits out on that particular point. So if I sign up to the event and enter the event, and I get this crash. So if anybody knows a way around that, if they could let me know, I'd appreciate it because I really do like Forza Horizon. Right, so let's quit out of that and try a bit of PS3. Yeah, that seems very good, 30 FPS, nice and smooth. All the sound is fine as well. Let's try the boost. Yeah, it's not struggling with that at all. Oh, well, I don't know how I made it through there. Yeah, very good, very responsive. No problems with that at all. And I've also got Grand Slam Tennis. Yeah, it seems to be working well. It's nice and responsive. Feels really good. It's a good game, actually. Yeah, nice. So to access the BIOS, if we switch on and start hitting delete, we get loads of options, very configurable. So we can see all the main details here. Uh, I can see under NVMe, we've got Zeta Stone CP200, a 512 gig stick, and there's another slot, so we can put another NVMe drive in here. And under advanced, you can see all sorts of features here, very configurable. security and boot. But if we go back to the main one, you can see here power mode select balance and you can put it onto performance. If you want it to use more power to increase the performance, you can through this. I've left it on balance for all of my gaming tests and it's been absolutely fine. But obviously if you want to eke out a bit more performance, if you've got a game that's not quite running well, but I do like the fact that it runs pretty quiet and it is performing really well on everything I've tried. So I've installed Kubuntu, which is Ubuntu with KDE Plasma on this crucial 240 gig SSD drive. Rather than take it apart, obviously I'm going to get better speeds with an NVMe drive, but Linux runs so well anyway. So if we quit out of this, and on start up, start tapping F7, that will get us into the boot menu, and you can see I've got Ubuntu or Windows on the NVMe. So let's launch Ubuntu, or Kubuntu, because it's got KDE Plasma on it, and uh, just have a look under about. So you can see it detects everything. Comes up with 12.4 gig of RAM, so it must be giving some to the graphics side of it. And the graphics seem to work pretty well. I've installed Steam on here, and I have a few games which are also Linux games, so if I go to my library, uh, I can tap on Linux at the top here, and it will show me only the ones that will work on this. So I've installed Superhot and Tomb Raider, so let's go with a bit of Superhot first of all. And this is a great game in VR, but it also works well with a controller. So if I punch the guy and then grab the gun, you see as I move around, the other characters move. So you've only got a certain amount of time. So I've shot this guy, and let's take out this guy as well. And you've got to anticipate when you see people running. You can, you can run it really fast, and I'll do that in a second. So this guy's running down the stairs, so if I shoot just a bit before him, say here, is that going to get him? No. And then someone comes from here. He, oh no, he has got him. He has got a gun, this guy, so let's shoot him as well. And also, so if I throw my gun at this guy, I might be able to pick up this other gun. Yeah, and you can see that other gun comes towards me again as well, but I've only got one gun. But I think he's going to die anyway because I've thrown the gun at him. Or maybe not, let's, let's make sure. But if I move fully, you can see it's much harder. So you, it, you basically need to kind of <laughs> take your time, dodge the bullets. And in VR, it's so immersive. But as you can see... It's working fine on this as well, but if you start running around, you are gonna get shot or hit. So if I do this, 
<laughs> it's a different way of playing it, but you can try and race through it. But as you can see, it's working absolutely fine. So 1080, 50 FPS, you can see it's such a lovely looking game. Again, not a new game, but really does look great. Graphics are really nice, really smooth, very controllable. Yeah, superb. Let's go down in the water and have a look around. So no problem at all, sound perfect, video looks great. And show you one more game, not with Steam. Uh, this was just installed with Linux, but this is Xmoto, which is very demanding. Not really, uh, but it's a game I'm pretty much addicted to. Uh, now, what was the level? There's, is it this new age one? I think it was this one. Yes, it's got a great start. So you've got to get over this wall. So you can see here, so you're not going to get over it going slow. So you basically got to try and go up and almost use it like a quarter pipe and then try and get some momentum and get that front wheel up and see if you can, <laughs> not quite, but it is, yeah, such a great game. I love this game. But also if we start opening some things up, so the browser, the settings, the plasma store, files, Raspberry Pi imager, you can see that everything works really fast. So let's have a look inside. And I saw from a video on their site that there's a really interesting way to get into this. So you twist the lid anti-clockwise and it just comes off like that. And then we've got four screws here to remove. And this looks like it just lifts off. There must be a cable connecting the fan somewhere. Oh, that's here. So inside we've got two sticks of RAM and one NVMe, and that NVMe's got a heat sink on it to keep it nice and cool, and we've still got a spare slot here as well. Oh, and also, you can see there must be Wi-Fi antennas here. And this just pops back on by twisting it back into place. Yeah, really nice, really impressed with the connectivity of it. I really like the connectivity, especially on the front, having that extra USB on the front and obviously in the future when I get my Oculink adapter and I could use an external graphics card, that's gonna be really good. So thanks very much for GMK Tech for sending me this to test. I'm very impressed. Hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.